This is KGW News at Sunrise. Good morning and thanks for getting up with us. On this Saturday morning, I'm trying to green. This morning on Sunrise, the man accused of killing a Vancouver mother and daughter now faces a new and disturbing charge. What we've learned this morning, plus a teacher's strike looms over Portland public schools. Is there hope for an 11th hour deal? But first, let's check in with Rod Hill for a quick look at the forecast. Good morning. Happy Saturday to you. Uh, should be a quiet weather day. I think all of your outdoor plans are absolutely a go. We're just not going to see much, if any, sunshine. And we're starting off with the low cloud deck turning into more of a fog deck, especially uh, up over the West Hills this morning. Out along the Columbia River, PDX, a little bit of mist being reported. That's the raindrop you see there in the observation. 58 is the temperature. Winds are calm. Everybody's in the 50s, I believe. Yes. Forest Grove, 53. Tiger, good morning, 55. Salem, good morning, 57. To you, uh, your planner for the day. We might get a patch of filtered sun, but otherwise it's just cloudy and quiet with light wind. 62 at noon. Today's high temperature not bad at 66 degrees. China. All right, Rod. Well, new this morning, the major crash team has been on the scene of a hit and run in downtown Portland. A pedestrian died in this crash along Southwest NATO Parkway at the ramp connected to the Morrison Bridge. If you're familiar with the area, this happened at around 430 this morning. Again, the driver fled the scene. Of course, we'll keep you updated on the situation as we learn more this morning. Teachers in Oregon's largest school district are preparing to walk off the job. The strike in Portland Public Schools could easily impact tens of thousands of families. Both the school district and the teachers union say they are willing to negotiate, hope to come to a conclusion before the November 1st strike date. They've set aside October 30th and 31st for the mediation. That is just one day before the proposed strike. So we'll see what happens there. But teachers are asking for additional planning time. They're asking for smaller class sizes. They're also asking for higher wages. But the district says there's just not enough money to meet the union's demands. We have between now and November 1st to reach an agreement. And we are prepared right now to use every one of those days to reach an agreement. We're willing to meet whenever they're willing to meet so that we can get to this resolution. Yeah, so if they don't reach an agreement, more than 40,000 students will be out of school until they do. That also means no pre-K, no daycare, no special education services. The district says varsity sports will continue during the strike, but all other extracurriculars will be canceled. The man accused of killing a Vancouver mother and her daughter is now also accused of rape, child rape. Kirkland Warren is already awaiting the trial for the murders of ex-girlfriend Michelle Melendez and her seven-year-old daughter Layla Stewart. Both were found dead in March in a rural part of Washougal. Warren briefly appeared in court on Friday for the new charge. He previously pleaded not guilty to the murder charges and is set to be arraigned on the added charge next week. And not guilty is a plea from a man accused of shooting two people in downtown Portland, killing one of them. 46 year old Jeffrey Hammond right there was indicted Friday morning in Multnomah County Court. He faces charges that include murder and assault. The shooting happened a little more than a week ago near the Moxie Hotel on Southwest Alder. It appears road rage was a factor in this. Police say Hammond had been blocking traffic when one of the victims confronted him. That's when investigators say Hammond started shooting, killing the other driver, also shooting a bystander. A trial date will be set later. You'll be seeing Portland's police officers wearing body cameras for now, at least after a two month pilot project just wrapped up 150 central precinct and gun violence reduction team office members. They begin wearing the cameras back in mid August. Officers were required to turn on their cameras for each call for service. They also activate automatically under certain circumstances. Since then, PPB says that they have recorded some 30,000 videos. It's a big, big change for us. It's a big um, effort for us to try to implement something on this scale. Um, and we want to make sure that when we do roll it out, that we've kind of worked out some of those bugs. Now, as part of that review, the city council will take a look and decide on next steps or adjustments with further training and roll out expected sometime in the spring. Vancouver's third safe stay community for those without a home is now close to opening. After several delays, a downtown location for tiny home pods should welcome residents before Thanksgiving. The site will be known as 415 West, located on West 11th Street. It was originally set to open earlier this past January, but according to city leaders, it turned into a 
bigger job that required bids from contractors and such. Now the site is paved. Power has been installed. The fence is going up. It will include 20 pods, all capable of housing up to two people each, similar to Vancouver's two existing safe stay locations out there. People living there will also have access to daily management and support services. The site is also located in a historic part of the city, drawing some opposition from businesses and neighbors, but city leaders hope the community will see the benefits. My hope and really kind of my expectation is that once the site is open and people have moved in and everyone really see how it works, um, I think that even more will come around. I've seen that at every location so far. November 20th or 21st is likely the move in date, according to Vancouver leaders and another safe state community is set to open nearby a month later, hopefully before Christmas.